Yeah. So I'll just introduce you. So Sule, thank you so much for coming. All right. Thanks for having me. Thanks for, for seeing me. And also, I just first and foremost, I love Jenny, by the way. Wow. It was very good. And also, I read the reviews. You guys have got good reviews, like outstanding reviews. Look, I'm not even... So I'm the guy that reads all the reviews. Do you? Yeah, I read everything. I read everything, good or (laughs) bad. I don't care. I really don't care. Um, But, like, yeah, it's... uh, I hope none of the cast members are going to watch this interview. (laughs) But, (laughs) yeah, um, we... Yeah. Yeah, the press, the press love it, and um, which is great because yeah. we love it. When we think it's a great play, and we think well, you know what we want to put out there is a good version of the play, and but you know we can only be true to ourselves and what we think the you know August Wilson and his estate want 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 to achieve by you know putting those plays out there, especially with these stories um, of like the people within the stories and the communities within the stories, and like yeah. You just put it out there and, and hope at least, you know, even if it's just one person that, that, that it resonates with, then it's great. But like when it's received so well on a wide scale like this, you have, we, you know, we have to be grateful that what we're doing is, is getting across. Definitely. And you know what? Because I, I thought I'm going to have a quick read because I watched the play when it was in, um, I think it was like the second performance. Right. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. And I was wondering, I wonder how, because you never know, because what I think is a great play, when it comes to the Old Vic, sometimes you get all sorts of people that come in to watch mm. a place and they may not appreciate the play because yeah. it is it, it is the African-American story. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, but I think I think that's great, though, isn't it? I, yeah, think, yeah, yeah. I, think it's, I think it's in venues like this where stories like that have to be seen because, you know, the, the Black experience is very similar around the world yeah like you know um so when you want to put stories like this out it's all well and good that black people come and watch it but the people that need to learn about it Mm -hmm. you know that that that, that's how that's how you expand the scope of uh, you know of a play like this that you know that's how you expand the 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 knowledge that is is trying to be imparted here because it's to bring it to venues like here venues that you know you know, that are on a large scale, they don't normally see plays like this. I think that's where the education needs to be, um, you know, put out. I, th- I think I think it's perfect that it's that it's been brought to um, this venue because what you tend to get is people coming out of it and going, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know that stuff was happening in, in, in Nigeria. I didn't know that that was how people lived in, in Pittsburgh. I didn't know that like there were, you know, the, the, the taxis wouldn't go to certain areas in Pittsburgh because of like the demograph- the demographic and, uh, uh, you know, all, all that sort of stuff. It, that, that's what you want to do. You want to like tell these stories that usually get swept under the carpet and bring them to the people who, you know, for whatever reason, are not privy to them. Yeah, I agree. That's why I think it's such a good venue because the Old Vic, it brings in a different type of audience. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think those are the audience members that really could appreciate hearing mm. the Black experience story because yeah. they, they don't. Because usually Old Vic have very, even though it is a play that was it wasn't written. You know, in two thousand, it's written in um, nineteen. Yeah, I think I think it's the only one that was actually. <laughs> It was actually written in the decade that it that it was yeah. actually set in. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. So yeah, I think he wrote, he started writing it in seventy. The play set in seventy seven, and it's yeah. written in seventy nine. But but it's like you were saying, even though it was written back then, you know the themes of gentrification, the bit, the huge theme of gentrification that's happening because obviously the Jitney station is being threatened by closure from the government. Mm-hmm. You know, all you've got to do is go to your Peckhams or go to your Dolsons or go to your Brixton's, and, you know, to see how, you know, even, even I used to live in Cardiff, even to see like how the Somali community were pushed out of the Bay area, you know, uh, because of these redevelopments. Mm. Uh, it, it, it's, it's something that's been happening for decades, if not centuries. And basically will will probably keep happening, yeah. um, you know, it far, far in, into the years to come. Um, and that's the beauty of August Wilson's work. Uh, you know, it's timeless. It's a good study of human beings and the nature of like humanity and how people treat people and how people put, um, um, you know, certain people, certain certain levels of society put profits over people. And um, 
And it's a thing that, you know, basically we have to see that. It, what I love is that it helps us spot the pattern and the cyclical nature of this whole thing and to see that it's not something that's new. It's not something that, you know, people can say, can justifiably say, oh, we never knew it was happening because it's always been happening. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. So it's, it's good to sort of point these things out and show the mistakes that we've made so we can learn how to not let these things happen in the future. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I totally agree. I mean, the themes and topics, everything relates completely to now. <laughs> Completely, even though it's set in '77, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Like time hasn't changed. To be I honest, I mean, I lived in Dalston for five years, and like I saw the skyline just change, mm. like absolutely change. Um, you know, on the high street, I lived, I lived right next to Ridley Road Market, and um, and just on the high street there on Kings on Kingsland um, High Street. Just when you look at the, the shops that are there now that weren't there like two years ago, you're like, yeah. whoa, what's what you know, you're like, what's 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 going on? Like it's those is getting bougie, man. Yeah, it just, <laughs> listen, is these areas bougie. have yeah, changed. Yeah, right next to Ridley Road Market, you've got like a prep there, you've got mm -hmm. a nice food hall there, you've got you know, the Mac the McDonald's has a roof terrace. <laughs> Sis, I'm not even <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's that? Where has got a roof terrace? You got a listen, roof terrace. Big you sit there with a canopy, like overlooking Kingsland Road. It's it's crazy. It's and crazy. you know what? I always, I always say, whenever there's a Pret in town, you know things are about to change. Yeah. yeah. So if there's a Pret, it's the whole the whole area yeah. is about to change. M and S Food Hall. <laughs> M and S Food Hall says, I'm telling you, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's insane. Because even and, and, and I think it's about how rapid this how rapidly yeah. this change happens as well it's like people don't have time to to react to it yeah, yeah, yeah. and then when you start to react to it um the process the react the process of the reaction with all the like the red tape and the bureaucracy and like you know the delaying of the all of that is such a long process yeah. and um and it just makes it difficult to respond and to and to recover from um you know the from the from the impact of, of like these so-called developments yeah. um and the impact on the community and the people who have like built up these communities you know that it, it, it's it's just devastating it is because like for example in jitney obviously it's a taxi um rink that mm -hmm. is facing gentrification happening in the community which is it's like a knock-on effect because it's going to affect not only the workers there, but the community around them, because yeah. they rely on this taxi firm. Yeah, and absolutely. I mean, what it's bad enough where people say that <laughs> when when you're being told that, for example, like so I read something somewhere. I, I think I read one of the reviews, and they were saying, "Oh, I get, we get we get it when people say um, when, when when you read the story or or the the synopsis and it says, oh yeah." it's set in an area that the cabs don't go to but you know as Londoners we remember when you know the taxis wouldn't go across the river do you, do you know what I mean it's like oh no no sorry yeah you come I, I wouldn't go there mate yeah somebody something you you know so one of my mates he got he got robbed in in, in his blah 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 blah, or whatever so yeah so we don't go there well, you know I know people that get robbed north of the river all the time <laughs> I, I, do, do you know what I mean but like you know you're still driving there and they said, oh, it was someone who looked like you that was mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, so that's why that guy doesn't go. I'm like, okay, but I'm sure there are people making the news who mm -hmm. look like you, who look like the other people that you're picking up, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that basically uh, you're still, that you that, you know, you're still picking these, these people up. So we have a thing where, oh God, I've lost my train of thought. What, what was the question? What was the question? Um, no, you made me. Look. But it was it was talking about um the, how the taxi in Jitney. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So it's it's hard enough to hear that in one instance that these guys aren't gonna be um you know taking people to your area. Yeah. So you create this thing for yourself then to sort of self sustain, but then when you see that on top of that they're now trying to force you with closure, you start to feel like well actually this is getting pretty deep because. Yeah, yeah. It's not just that, you know, these people are trying to protect themselves, but they're trying to like sort of, in a sense, in a way, wipe us out and move us and move us away from these areas. Yeah. And like what that does to you as a, 
you know, you know, psychologically and as a community, you know, collectively as a community, it's devastating because you feel like the second class citizen. Mm-hmm. Or if, if, you know, even being a second class citizen might be might be a step up from the way these things are making you feel. Yeah. So, of course, these characters that are coming in and out have got like the weight of the world on their shoulders. Of course, like some of them are suffering from you know um psychological and 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 and, 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 and mental problems you know you hear about characters that you don't even see in the play who are ranting on the streets about like you know how everything is 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 being set up against them you know you hear about cigar and you hear about stool pigeon and um and this is another thing that i love about um uh mr wilson's work is that you hear about a character stool pigeon um that's casually mentioned in our play who I say my character says, oh, he should be he should be put in um, he should he should be he should be put in uh, Mayview, which is a uh, like the local um, asylum um, center, and it and it's and that character, even though you don't see him in the play, mm. I think comes about as a fully realized character in King Headley, which is set a few years later, and we see him as a ranting like madman on the street but then he turns up in king henley as a prophet wow yeah so you know it's like it's it's one of those things where on the surface of it we look at it and we go and 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 kind of ignore it but when you dig deeper into what the cause of these uh of these people's distress is it's like actually do you know what all the signs were there for us to see but you know a lot of us were ignoring it and the people who were seeing it we we kind of just learn to ignore them and then and i think that's the thing we need to pull together and actually listen to each other and band together to sort of so that these communities can like you know thrive and 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 survive it's about survival you know it's interesting because you 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 have touched on this already about august wilson because this play jitney reminds me a lot of two trains running mm. and the same kind of themes Which where I'm, I'm, le- I'm less familiar with but like but yeah i, I can i can see how that yeah because it's it like because that one was set in a cafe it's like a cafe or a diner that's about mm. to get knocked down because of mm. um gentrification again and i guess i guess this is a question f- for you which is because a lot of play- a lot of august wilson's plays are coming back Mm. Um, and even obviously we know Fences was huge and yeah, he's yeah, um, yeah. Oscar winning Den- Denzel, yeah Denzel Washington is making sure we are we, <laughs> we we you know no I think he literally has like the rights to make all of them now into, into yeah 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 I think I think that's what he's going to try and do he's going to try and make them all into films but he owns he owns the rights to um producing them now so yeah interesting so yeah really interesting we... and, and it's very interesting that you mentioned two trains running as well because Memphis Lee was a huge character in that, I think, mm. and um, and he's another one that gets a little mention in our play here as well. That's, actually, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, that's... yeah, yeah. You know when you know when we're having the meeting. To, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to give too. I don't want to give too many yeah, too much yeah. away. <laughs> but it's literally just in passing. You know, we're talking about how they might be closing us down, and my character goes, "Remember, that's just how they put Memphis Lee out of business." Wow. And and this is interesting. Uh, this is one thing I would love to. Um, I just wish I could pick. August Wilson's brain, you know, because this was the first, Jitney was the first play that he wrote. And I really wanted to know whether, um, if he knew when he was writing this play that he was going to create this universe, um, uh, like, like if, if he, because he mentions all these characters that pop up in the plays that he wrote, um, like after Jitney. Yeah. And I wonder if he knew when he was mentioning them in Jitney that he was going to make them into full characters mm. uh, and like follow the threads of those stories because it's like you say gentrification is a huge theme in, in two trains running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's and it's a very specific mention about uh, about Memphis uh, uh, Memphis Lee in relation to like his his business being closed down. Interesting. And yeah, so it's you know his, the guy's genius absolutely yeah. really fascinates me. He's um, like, it feels like I'm watching The Avengers, really. Where they yeah, do you know what? That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. It's, it's like, like The Avengers. It's exactly what I was thinking. This whole, mm. it's the, the Wilson universe, man. Yeah. yeah. And you're, you're in it. You're in the universe. Hey, look, look. I'm just happy to be part of the world. <laughs> Um, you're but I, you're, you're right. I'm, and, I'm, and I'm super proud. I'm really, really, really proud. Like, August Wilson is a, is a legend. Do you know what I mean? It's, um, yeah. 
it, it, it's, it's an incredible honour to be... I mean, the last time this play was on in London was in 2001. It's been 20 years wow. since this play has been on here. And, like, and some powerhouse... Like huge August Wilson actors were, mm. were, in, were in that. I know the guy that played my my um, role when it was here um, was Stephen McKinley Henderson. Okay. And um, you know he he popped. He, he he's done like a few like August Wilson. He turns up as Jim Bono in Fences with Denzel Washington. Wow. Um, who also gets a casual mention in this. That's another character who's a, who's mentioned in. You know, um, yeah, you know, he's a huge actor. He was in, he was in June, like you know, June that came out that this yeah, this, yeah. Or, um, this year or last year, I can't remember. But um, but yeah, it's a real, it's it, it's a real privilege, obviously, to be working in this building as well. But to yeah, be yeah. playing such, playing a part in such an iconic and like seminal, um. Uh, you know, piece of piece of writing for American literature, or just for the English English speaking literature. Do you know what I mean? It's it, yeah, I, the 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 gravity of that is not is not missed. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know, I have a question about your character, Turnbo, because mm. Turnbo sticks out to me, and it's interesting because Turnbo is the kind of character that is problematic. Yeah, in in many. He's that's, one the, that's one of the many words that you could use mm. to accurately describe. Problematic, it. and he definitely knows how to run his mouth, shall we yes. say. I'm trying to not, I don't want to give away too much. <laughs> yeah, that's all good, that's all good. Um, but my question about Turnbo, and actually, is basically, so obviously the play itself has a lot of kind of themes around violence. Mm. Um, and I'm trying to I'm trying to find the best way to word this because again I don't want to give away too much. Yeah, sure. So I guess although there are many themes that stood out for me, the main one was the repercussions of solving problems through violence. Yes. In the black community. Yes. And we hear yes, many yes. stories of how different people handled situations and how it led to not great outcomes. Yeah. Um, and I guess we have recently seen negative impacts of how we handle issues i.e the world went crazy when will smith slapped chris rock mm. and it wasn't because it it was you know a black man handling his business who knows why people mm. took it yeah but yeah. um why it's, think... inter it's, in it's interesting so specifically what were you going to ask them why, why do i think i was going to ask you why do you think turnbow although he because to me he seems like a wise enough character but he does some things that make me wonder why on earth did he do what he's why he's mm. done those things. And knowing and seeing how violence can be so negative within yeah. his community, why yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, was he like that? Um, this is the thing. Like Turnbo is very, very, very interesting in that like we've worked out from you know the the, be the beauty of August Wilson is that he he, he helps to give us um, a backstory to a lot of the characters that um, that are in there, which is amazing for actors because one thing we have to usually do is try and figure out a backstory for ourselves but we kind of get a slight hint um to, into a, a sort of nudge into his backstory because um you kind of see that um um uh, you know he was raised by his grandmother so his parents weren't on the scene for whatever reason um and it's a similar uh, i wonder if you know, there's a similarity to like his his story with regards to his parents as one of the characters from Ma Rainey's Black Bottom because, um, you know, for whoever hasn't seen it, I won't give any spoilers, but one of the characters in that like had a really traumatic thing happen to him when he was young and um, in terms of like what he witnessed happen to his mother. And um, so I wonder if, there was something that happened in Turnbow's um, life with regards to his parents, because um, he was raised by his grandmother. She taught him all of his principles, um, like everything that he knows and the way that he lives his life was, um, you know, it was all from his grandmother's teachings. And, um, and I wonder if having been raised by her from a young age, you know, kids are so programmable, like at the, uh, from a very young age. And I feel like he had some strong, strong uh, principles instilled in him at a time where people were absolutely 
were, were suffering all kinds of like psychological and physical trauma. Um, uh, and you know, that he, he basically goes through life um, by, um, I guess, not really admitting when he's wrong. Mm. Um, because I feel like that's a, that would all kind of, in a way, be an admission of, of weakness. If, if, if you, it, he kind of lives the rules of the, of, the, of the sort of jungle, basically. If you show weakness, you will be pounced upon. Mm. And I feel like he's someone that really, really needs to be respected. Yeah. And I feel like he's someone that feels that he's put the hours in and he's paid his dues and that the world owes him. And like, I mean, you know what, what it's like with black communities, you know, age is, is status. Uh, regardless of what, what money you have or whatever, you should respect your elders. Mm -hmm. And I think his, like, his big thing is that he can take the banter from his peers and his seniors, mm -hmm. but like people that are younger than him yeah. need to show him respect. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I wonder if that coupled with some sorts of... Um, mental health issues that might have stemmed from whatever it is he might have experienced when he was growing up he's got an odd relationship with women which again mm -hmm. makes me think um you know because his mother wasn't on the scene and like he's had a weird relationship with uh, this this upbringing from his grandmother i wonder if all those things have been ingredients in um you know in in in, in the in the stew and the storm that is create that has created him basically yeah um so yeah, I, I I feel like he's had a lot in his upbringing that's um, sort of basically led him to the turmoil that we see here today. But you know, everyone everyone's loyal to him. No, every, he might annoy everyone, but like, there's a reason why everyone keeps him around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, um, Baka is a father figure to all these guys, and it's like he's it's like he's got all these children around him mm. that he has to man manage and um, uh, and and. You know, like anyone that's raising a family will know that, that all their kids need different types of attention and different types of love and different types of approaches. Like raising fam raising kids is like man management, basically. Yeah, it's like being yeah, a really good yeah. football manager. Do you, know, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's about giving everybody the exact type of attention that they need yeah. so that they don't go off the rails in a really, really huge way. And we know Turnbow is on the cusp of going off the rails in a really, really, really huge way. But, I think you're right. I think it, it just, I kind of saw it as just one more thing is all he needs, one more prod. And it's, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. it's how I kind of- In the of... wrong direction. And then the, and then it's just, yeah. Yeah, it would yeah. Be, yeah, it could, it, it's finely balanced and it just, it would take the tiniest of pushes to just knock him, knock him over, it's I think. Him. It's interesting. If you had to summarise the play, because it, it, there is a lot to it, and obviously we spoke a lot about gentrification, about violence, even mental health. Mm -hmm. If you had to give the play like three, three things, three oh, words. Three words, okay. Uh, let's see. It's, um, I think it's timeless. Yep. I think it's... Um, Oh God, this is always so tricky. I think it's timeless. I think it's, um, I'm going to, I'm going to hyphenate two words. Okay. Black, the black experience. Yep. Um, and by the end, I think it's hopeful. Interesting. The timeless black experience and hopeful. The hopeful one is very interesting because actually, yeah, I kind of agree with you. I, I, it's hard because I don't want to say what yeah. you say is just too much of a spoiler. It's it's the Pandora's box of yeah. plays mm. because it's got everything in it, yeah. and once everything goes out of it, the only thing left in the box at the end is hope. Yeah, you're right. You're right, and that's and I guess that's life in itself, isn't it? Mm, exactly. Exactly. Like, in the last it's not about it's not, you can't stop dwelling on the past let's look to the future and let's see yeah. how let's see how we can make it better knowing what we know about the past it's so true so i've got some quick fire questions for you okay. These are nice quick ones so the first one is what is your favorite theater space oh royal exchange manchester interesting okay yeah 
beautiful, amazing. It's in the round. It's like 700 seats, mm-hmm. I think, something like that. Um, acoustics are incredible. There's a sweet spot near the middle, just off the middle, where you sound, you feel like you've been miked by the heavens, basically. <laughs> And, uh, and when you see it from the outside, it looks like, so it's in the old exchange building. So it's in this massive hall with pillars all around it. And the, the theater itself is a structure within the building. And it looks like a spaceship, like right in the middle of this hall. And yeah, I think it's beautiful. Everyone is kind of, is all around you looking down. It makes blocking heavenly. I, I really, I really enjoyed my time there. So you like the round. That reminds me, because with see my favorite in the round space is actually, a, Roundhouse, which is where I saw Barbershop yes. Chronicles. Yes, yes. I, saw, I was there. I was there press night for that as well. Oh, like, okay. I didn't, yeah. I didn't do that. I didn't. You did do that. Well, you did the. Yeah. Um, I yeah. did. Um, did the national darling. <laughs> well, nothing can beat the national. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Literally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I do love the Roundhouse as well. That's good. But I think my favorite ever one. I've got great memories associated to it as well. I think it's, it's the Royal Exchange. Interesting. Favorite playwright. Tough one. Mm, probably Carol Churchill. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What yeah. play of Carol Churchill is the one for you? Oh, I lo- so like every time I see. Okay, so like I've I've, I've done three of her plays. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a play called Serious Money, which was yeah. um, set in like the eighty stock exchange scene. Uh, the production we did we did it when I was um, living in Cardiff it was absolutely brilliant um there was a I think it was first done at the Royal um, uh, at the Royal Court um and it was you know the music was written by I think Ian Drury or the lyrics of it anyway but there was no recorded there was no recorded um like audio visual recording of like how the music was played so all we had was the lyrics and then we had to make it up so we did it we set it in like the 80s yuppie sort of um, stock exchange scene. But then when it came to the music, we got like a hip hop MC to come in and tell us, teach us how to beatbox. Wow. And um, basically we did it all as a rap instead. And, uh, amazing. It was, I mean, I don't want to blow our own trumpets, but <laughs> it was phenomenal. It was absolutely phenomenal. And then I did a production of um, Love and Information at, in, che- in the Crucible in Sheffield. Yeah. It's one of my favourite ever plays that I've done. It was just, it looked amazing. Caroline Steinbeis directed it. And, and the beauty of that play is that, I don't know if you've ever read Love and Information, but it's a collection of like, like 60 odd scenes or something. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just words on a page. There's no indication of where it's set. Um, how many people are in the scene, whether they're male or female, all it gives you is the words. And you basically have to build a play around each scene. Build it, you, uh-huh. Every scene is a different scenario, all unconnected. And so we made basically 60 little plays. Wow. And the beauty wow. of that is that because it's so skeletal, yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can, every production could potentially be anything you want it to be. Mm. So you've got 60, 60 plays within the writing, but then you've got potentially thousands or hundreds of thousands of different versions every single time that that play that play is done. Yeah, I'm going to have to read this play because... Oh, it's, it's brilliant. It's just little snippets of people's lives. It's tiny yeah, little yeah. snippets of people's lives and scenes of people's lives. And they can seem like pretty mundane and some of it doesn't even... Make, they're like little dreams. There's no beginning, there's no end. Mm. Um, you know, and, and you just wake up in the middle of it and then the thing is happening. And it's all about how you choose to like produce and set up all these scenes. It's the same with um, Glass Kill Bluebeard Imp as well, which I did at the Royal Court with James, um, uh, James McDonald directed that. And she just gives you the bare bones of something and, she, and it's just a license for the creatives and the actors to just go wild and just mm-hmm. make whatever you want. Every production can literally, you, you can watch plays like that a hundred times and never see anything that looks the same. And I think that's really exciting. I think yeah. that's she's one of my favourites. That's that, and that makes sense to us because that's. I think that's a really cool way of being a playwright, where you yeah. can just, every play is slightly yeah, different. Yeah, yeah absolutely, totally, totally makes sense. Dream guest, so someone you would love to see to watch Jitney, and they could be dead or alive, by the way. Do you know? Maybe I think I'd like August Wilson to see Jitney. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, that's a... I, I would like him to see our version of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Because it's the first one he wrote. Yeah. It's um it was the last one of the cycle to get to Broadway. Interesting. Yeah. It did all these other places and all the other plays got to Broadway before that one. It came to London before it went to Broadway. I wonder if he saw the London one, because he died in 2005. He died in 2005, so probably. He, he, might, he might have seen it. Maybe yeah. he did see it. Um, but, um, but also, I think the child in me <laughs> always wants to, be, wants to perform it in front of the writer to see if we did a good, <laughs> a good job. <laughs> Um, and also, I would like to pick his brains about stuff like yeah, yeah. the stuff that we talked about before. Yeah. Did he know that he wanted to um, do all these um, all these other plays that are attached to it, uh, like in the universe of it? Did he know that he was going to make those make those versions and uh, make those other plays? Yeah. Um, or is or was it something that stemmed from having written this play? He went. Oh, maybe I could take this character and turn him into something, or maybe I could take this character and turn him into something. I would just, yeah, I just like him. I would just like to have that chat in the bar with him afterwards yeah. and, uh, and go, just talk, just fill me with information, please. Just fill me with information. It's true, and I would like to know, especially now that we've noticed there's a whole universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to know. Yeah, there's so many links. There's yeah. so many links within it's all insane. the other plays. Um, Another one, I've only got a few more, which is what made you take on the role as Turnbo? As Turnbow, mm. um, because he, Turnbow's a bit of a problem. Okay. As in, like, the, the character Turnbow. Turnbow's not someone that I would like in real life. Turnbow's not someone that I would have time for in real life. Do you know what I mean? Turnbow is someone that, that like, you know, I've got friends that are like Turnbow mm. who I haven't spoken to in years. Yeah. Because you, you give them a chance, you give them a chance, you give them a chance, you give them a chance. Eventually you're like, actually, you're just treating me like an idiot now. Mm. If you keep doing this and you keep like inconveniencing me and like making things awkward for everyone because they're awkward for you, yeah, yeah. Like, um, yeah. then I don't have time for you. Mm. I absolutely don't have time for you anymore. And it's really interesting to try and get into the head of a character like that. Yeah. Um, because... For one thing, I really know I've seen that person in my life. Um, and I guess playing Turnbow sort of gives me a kind of way of trying to understand that person a bit more. And maybe I can be a bit more um, empathetic, I guess, mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a sense. And, and more sympathetic. I try and maybe understand people a bit more, people like that, people that have got those, because, you know, that's not coming from nowhere. Yeah. Something has something has happened for him to get to where he is there. Mm. And maybe trying to learn and understand that is a way of, like, being around it more and uh, being able to be around it more and being able to help them if they need the help. Yeah. To, you know, to be more... Not that I'm saying that he has to be more tolerable, but if he wants friends, <laughs> and if he wants people, right. to, if, he wants. Know, if he doesn't want to be the one organizing his own funeral, <laughs> 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 you know, the help is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a very that's a nice way of kind of taking on a character as well to understand those. Yeah. That similar. I think that's really that's a really um, it's a good because it helps you to kind of understand how people why people do what they do mm. and to kind of have a bit more patience or tolerance yeah towards them. Um, yeah ex exactly i mean there's all kinds of other reasons as well that that being one of the big reasons but you yeah. know who wants to pass up the chance to, to do an august wilson and I, with, I think. With, with with headlong with with yeah. two well i mean at the time it was it was it was in leeds we did we went we didn't even know it was going to come to the old Vic, you know but it was just like on the off chance that it would you know Leeds, Leeds Playhouse is a great theatre as well yeah, but like yeah. you know you do it and you hope that it's gonna go further and have a further life as well like you know yeah. you just these are the kind of stories you want to I'm not I, I say this in almost every interview that I do but I'm not a very politically articulate person as well so like when you see a play that like that, that, that speaks and says that articulates ev everything that you wish you could say in a conversation every day, but 
never quite had the you know this is what happens in theater even when you're not on stage live stuff happens but <laughs> but um but yeah when you're not able to like be that quick fire sharp person that, yeah. that, that that wants to say things at a moment where it would have like an impact or that could potentially change someone's opinion or see or let someone see your point of view when you're not that person when you get the opportunity to tell stories like this that speaks to your ideals and speaks to your like your political beliefs um then then you know you take these opportunities to like to tell your stories to 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 share your beliefs to you know basically say this is what's going on and and I'm not trying to force my opinion on you. I just want you to see my point of view. Whatever you want to take from that, take from that. Mm, no, 100%. Mm. Another quick fire question, which is what is your proudest moment or career moment to date? Because one thing I always say, whenever I think of you, Sule, I always say Sule <laughs> is in every play. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know I was what? I was, I was with, I was with, I was with I'm, Papa. I was with Papa. See, I saw Papa after... Um, he did a number here at the old Vic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and he just looked at me and he just laughs at me every time he sees me. I go, why are you laughing? He was like, he's like, you're literally doing every play that's coming up this year. He goes, he goes, I'm surprised you're not in this play. I'm surprised you're not playing my part, basically. He goes to me. He's always, he's always taking the nick out of me. And do you know what? I just, yeah, I love, <laughs> I love doing plays. What can I say? But, um, but your question was, what's my, what's my proudest, what's your proudest moment? career moment to date? It was actually here, um, yeah. in All My Sons, another headlong okay, production. Yeah, yeah, I saw that one. Yeah, and I think it was probably my moment on stage with the great legend that is Sally Field. Oh yeah, of course, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, I think. Was she? Was she nice? She was the loveliest. She is the loveliest human being. She stays in touch she wants to know what's going on in in, in our life she's she's just the loveliest she's amazing and like you know it, it's it's that moment on the stage where it's at the beginning of the third act and um and she doesn't know where her son is and she's mm -hmm. sitting and it's it's night time she's looking at the stars and i come in and she thinks it's her son and then i go to her and i like do this monologue in front of her talking about the stars and the film and it's just like at that moment where it's just me and her on stage there's a spotlight on us and I'm talking to her and she's looking at me and I'm like I'm, sit I'm sitting doing a monologue to Sally, <laughs> to Sally I've got more words than her in this scene <laughs> it's like, but you know you feel like you're the only two people in the world yeah, at, yeah. In moments like that, like everything is still, the whole theatre is silent, everywhere is pitch black apart from us. Mm. And, you know, and, 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 I, and I've been a fan from her since before, before I was an actor, like I've been a fan of her since, you know, since, since I was a toddler, I've been watching a movie since mm. the 80s, do you know what I mean? And a bit of, a, a, it's moments like that that make me, especially, you know, I don't come from a big theatre background. I don't come from a theatre background at all. I don't come from an artistic background at all. Um, and things like this, when I was doing them as a child, I was being told, you know, you're wasting your time. Go and do this and go and do that instead. This is not meant for you. Blah, 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 blah. blah. Have you considered it? You might not be very good at it. You know, go try and become a lawyer, this and that. You know, I studied law when I was in, when I was in university and twice. And, and it was like, I, I didn't think you know when I was 25 26 27 I didn't think I, I wasn't even I had, I had no intention of being a professional actor yeah and then I had that moment where I'm just like actually I'm just gonna go for it mm. and I went for it and even as I started doing it I'm like this is a dumb decision but this is what I want to do because I'm not working I'm not working I'm not working so for all of that to have happened and then to get to the moment where I'm on the stage with her mm. someone whom I admire so so much um and like you know in in one of <laughs> the most famous theaters in the world uh, yeah especially at a moment where liverpool were playing barcelona i'm sorry i have to throw this in because it was during the champions league 
Liverpool were playing the famous any football fans watching, they will know that Liverpool were playing Barcelona in that match where we had to beat them 4-0 at Anfield to go to the Champions League final. And I missed that last goal because we were watching the match backstage and I missed that last goal, which is one of the greatest Champions League goals ever to be scored. And you know, and I'm a huge Liverpool fan. I'm a massive Liverpool fan. But any footballer watching the or football fan watching this will understand how significant that is. And for me to come off that stage and not be angry, you know that the moment that I was having on stage was monumental for me. Mm-hmm. Without a doubt. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So I think that's probably every night that I did that was my uh, on stage with, with Sally was probably my proudest career moment. That's really lovely, you know that. And I'm glad I saw that play because at least I can understand. Yeah. Sometimes I oh, don't know, <laughs> but this one I know. I know this play. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. And it was. It was truly. Yeah. It was a incredible. The whole experience was fantastic. All the all the cast was amazing. Yeah, it was a really. And good um, yeah, and I met I made some great friends, great memories. But like that one, that one sticks out. I think. And what or no, or who? has been your greatest impact towards your career? Do you know what? He probably didn't know it. We, neither of us would have known it at the time. Yeah. But I have a good friend called Miss Anne Harriman. He's an incredible photographer. Um, I don't know if you saw, like, he documented a lot of the Black Lives Matter stuff. Okay. Um, um, Like, um, when George Floyd was murdered. And... um, and he took a lot of photos of the protests, um, and he came into you know he came into like Miss Miss Anne became this huge sort of voice of a generation basically. Um, when, and it just so happens that Miss Anne and I have been friends for like nearly thirty years, and um, and we were in school together for a couple of years, and uh, and it was moments with him, he's very passionate about film and moving images and music and like soundtracks and stuff for film. And um, when we were in school together, I think he set me off on this journey um, (laughs) that I didn't know I was on because it kind of like sort of reignited my, my sort of love for, I guess, film and acting. He would show me what's the best way to put it? He would make me watch movies and actors that are now like my favourite things in those categories. And like he ignited something in me that basically I now realise was the beginning of my journey into wanting to do what I do now. So like he made me go into it back then as a passionate hobby and that has now sort of germinated into what is now something that completely defines me as a human being yeah yeah and um and my passion was ignited by his passion i think and um and you know similar backgrounds raised by like quite conservative nigerian families Mm. um who were very you know gina yasheri put it quite quite beautifully where she goes you have four choices as a, as a Nigerian child, um, become a doctor, lawyer, engineer, or disowned. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, it's, it's the same, it's the same story, but, but like, mo- especially for Nigerian kids that go into the artistic world. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, basically our parents think, oh, you want to go and become a clown. You want to become uh, a... <laughs> <laughs> You know, if it's not one of those three things, then 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 you know, they feel like they failed in the in in, in, in their jobs as parents. But yeah, Miss Anne's, like I said, Miss Anne's passion, like lit lit a fuse for me. Yeah, that has now exploded into this into this thing into me, like being at the Old Vic for the third time and 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 you know, meeting some incredible, even th- either through him or through just my own endeavours, just like meeting people that I've been huge fans of, working with people that I've, be- that I've been huge fans of as 
you know, as a as a uh, you know as as a child, a teenager, as a young adult, and who I'm now peers and co- and, and and colleagues with. So I feel like Missan, if I had to if I had to boil it down, I think that fuse was lit with Missan when we were well, yeah, when we were teenagers going to school together. That's a, a beautiful thing because it's been a, a one person's really like yeah, and he's like he's like my brother. He's like you know we're only DNA separates us really. <laughs> He, do, you, do you know what I mean? He's yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's one of my oldest and, de- and, de- and dearest friends, and like, and he's he's doing amazing things. He's really using his platform to do incredible things. I will, I think, I will forever be inspired by him. I hope he doesn't watch this because his head is big enough already. So, like, <laughs> it's gonna be, it's gonna be massive by yeah, the end yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, he won't be able to fit out of his door. No, exactly. He'll be he stuck. out of his house. <laughs> <laughs> And my last question for you, Sule, is what is next for Sule? Can you tell is me what is next? next? I can actually. Oh, I you can, can actually, okay. because it's been announced. Um, there's some things that are coming out that I can't I can't talk about yet, but but they will it all will be revealed when they come out on TV. Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of theatre, I have the privilege and honour of working with my good friend again, um, Lynette Linton, who is artistic nice. director of the Bush. Um, but we will be doing a job together at the National. Um, oh. We are in a play by Pearl Cleach called Clues for an Alabama Sky. Um, that's been announced and uh, we will start performing in September. Um, in addition to myself, it has a cast of people, again, who I'm fans of, I'm, I'm a fan of, and um, who are, I also have the honour of calling some of them friends. Um, we have Ozzy Akile, who I did sweat with before. Also, yeah, he's, great, great um, he's brilliant. He's 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 awesome. Um, the lovely, talented Ronke and the oh, yeah. <laughs> and name always stumbles me. Um, Ronke is going to be in it. Giles Torreira is going to be in it, and um, this is a big cast. It's a huge. It's Ronke, a, you, know, you guys work yeah. together on Three Sisters, right? Uh, me and Ronke, yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. you know, we were like, let's hope it happens again soon. And here it is happening again. And um, we also have the wonderful Samira Wiley coming down from the States to, you wow. know, to be involved in it as well. She's amazing. She's awesome. Wow. Like, that's a real coup. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about performing um, that play in yeah. the next few months. I'm going to check that one out. I didn't oh, even check it I'm, out. We can do I'm, another interview. Yeah, because <laughs> that one sounds so good. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah and big I'm really, well. I'm really excited by it. I'm really, really excited by it. And yeah, it's going to be on in the Littleton at the National. Oh, perfect. Yeah. No, that'd be amazing. Well, Sule, I'm not going to hold you any longer. I've held you hostage for ages now. That's all good. I've been in worse situations. Okay, good. Worse. Situations. Your top five worst. <laughs> always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. No, oh, thank you. Me. And yeah, no, again, Jitney is a great play. And, thank um, you so much. I'm glad yeah. you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank it's you. Great. Thank you. All of you guys. Tell your friends. Bring them all. I will. I will. The more the merrier. We need we need our people to come and watch a play Absolutely. like Absolutely. this. Absolutely. And we need not our people to come and watch it as well. Because yeah, everyone. It's for everyone. The stories, my, you know, the stories speak to everybody because it's yeah. not just about the black experience it's about it's about relationships it's about people uh, people think that black experience is exclusive to to black people but people in some capacity experience the same thing that these black people experience so like it will speak to everyone that watches it in one way or another so like i urge everybody to come see it if you don't come and see it that's your problem <laughs> it's your own problem because you will regret it that's my that's <laughs> that's 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 all i have to say about that it's true no it's true sule you have been great thank you so much thank, thank you. you so much good thank to you. hear from you thank you yeah definitely i'm sure i'll see you soon